Have you ever been on a first date and wondered, I'm not really sure how this is going, or does this person really like me, or I'm not really sure I like them. Should I go out with them again? Well, if you have ever wondered any of those things, then stay tuned because we have a whole lot to talk about. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Her Side, His Side. I'm Dr. Carol. What we're gonna talk about on this episode is the red flags to watch out for on a first date. Now, I have talked to so many people, you know, because I do this for a living, obviously. I teach college classes on this topic, I do coaching, and so I've heard a lot of people's stories. And I can't tell you how many people are just really not sure about how their first date went. You would think, well, you know, you have a pretty good sense, right? Like, oh, yeah, they like me, or no, they don't, or ooh, I don't like them, or I really like them. You know, either way, you think most people kind of come out with a, a sense of where it's going, if it's going anywhere. But you know what? A lot of people don't. Sometimes they're just like, I like this person too much, or I don't like them, but maybe I should go out. So that's the thing we're going to talk about today is like, what are the red flags to watch out for on a first date? Because I've known too many people who get into bad relationships and even toxic relationships, like really, really bad relationships. And they're often saying to me like, I don't know how I got myself into this. How did I get here? Like, how did I miss the signs? How did I not see this person for who they really were in the beginning? And so, you know, lots of times when I talk to them, they really didn't miss the red flags. <laughs> they just ignored the red flags. And I'm guilty of that too in my youth. I definitely um, went out with people where I saw, ooh, this could be a problem, but you know, there's so many other good things about them. And I'm like, well, we'll see where it goes. Maybe he'll change or he'll get better. And uh, so <laughs> I've made my own mistakes on this. So this particular episode is going to help you weed out the time wasters, weed out the people who will um, turn into duds, you know, the people that you definitely don't want to, you know, like I said, waste your time with. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, first red flag, did they show up late? Now, okay, I don't want to criticize any of you out there who might not be a timely person, okay? So don't take this personally, please. Because I grew up with a mother who is always early and a father who is always late, like really late. And um, it always bugged me that my dad was late. Um, and my parents were divorced. And so sometimes my dad would, you know, pick me up like an hour late. And not because he forgot or anything, you know, he's a very busy dentist. And so he didn't really mean to cause me any angst by being late. But um, it did bug me. And so I learned two very different value systems from my parents. My dad didn't think it was a big deal, which is fine. He was like an amazing person overall. That was just one thing that I didn't particularly enjoy about his lateness. But my point is, is that I guess I sided with my mom. Not that I was siding with anyone, but I tend to be either early or on time because I learned that, um, and again, not trying to criticize anyone out there who does show up late. But for those of us who do show up on time or early, I just want to let you know how we view you when you show up late. Um, we view you as not really respecting our time. You know, I had a friend once who I no longer see for a variety of reasons, but one of them was she was chronically late. Again, I'm not talking about five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We're talking hour, hour and a half minimum. And I would sit there and wait in a restaurant for her for at least an hour sometimes. And I just got fed up with it. And she never apologized. She never saw it as a problem. And I'm like, you know, I could be at home doing something more constructive than just sitting here, wasting my time waiting for you. So that's how a lot of us who are timely people view that behavior. 
Um, so, you know, if you are one of those late people, try not to be late for a first date because us people will be like, well, they're kind of selfish. They don't respect my time. Um, again, maybe you don't get an apology like my friend never apologized. Uh, or they don't even care about making a good first impression. You know, imagine showing up to a job interview late with no apology <laughs> and you don't really care what the employer, potential employer, thinks about you. I'm sure there are people in the world who do that, but that's not the best way to get a job because most employers would be like, oh, you're late, bye-bye, you know, on to the next one or you're late and you didn't apologize or say, oh my gosh, here's a car wreck, I'm really sorry. Um, you know, maybe you didn't dress well enough and it just shows that you didn't want to put your best foot forward. Well, that's not a good way to make a good impression. So think about it. You know, you should think of a first date the same way you think about a job interview. It's kind of the same thing. Yes, you're not interviewing for an actual job where you're going to make money, but you're interviewing technically for the job of potential partner with this person. You know, you're on a date to see if you like the person and see if they like you and see if you want to keep seeing each other. That's a lot of C's in there. <laughs> Going out and pro potentially form a relationship or even marriage. You know, that's the whole point of a date. So if this person is not putting their best foot forward and trying to, I don't say impress you. I don't mean like being fake. You know, there's a big difference between being fake on a first date and just making a good impression on a first date. Um, a lot of people are fake on first dates or even in the beginning of relationships, but that's a whole other episode. But, um, you know, they should at least care what you think about them. And so if they show up late, don't apologize, they're probably just not that really worried about what you think about them. And that's true, and this is going to be a theme in this episode, it's going to be, you know, like a pattern in your relationship, should you ever get into a relationship with that person. So that's just something to keep in mind. Friendly greeting might sound obvious, you know, but some people just aren't that friendly. Um, now, greetings are kind of awkward on a first date. Like, it depends on how you grew up. So I grew up in a family of huggers, right? Me. Not only my immediate family, but my extended family. So my mom's oldest of seven kids, and so every time we go to, you know, a big family party or um, Thanksgiving, you always have to hug and kiss every single person hello and goodbye. And some people might find it annoying, but that's just our culture. So I'm a hugger by nature, but I realize that not everybody is a hugger. A lot of people don't like touch, don't like hugging. Um, some people don't even like handshakes, like I'm a germaphobe, so I don't really like shaking hands. I will, but, you know, for me, a hug is better. However, you know, on a first date, you've never met that person, so a lot of people are uncomfortable with a hug. I tend to maybe go in for a hug if they seem receptive to it. You know, if they're like, oh, hey, a big smile, how you doing? Maybe the arms open, I'll, I'll go in for the hug, or maybe handshake, or whatnot, but Regardless, you kind of have to read their body language, um, but if they're just like, oh, hey, what's up? All right, let's go get a seat. You know, like, if they're not warm or polite or anything like that, you know, it might indicate a rude personality deep down because, again, <laughs> you know, they should be making their first best impression, but if they're not, then, eh, it's a red flag. So, same kind of theme here. Maybe they're really nice to you. Maybe they greeted you with a hug or a handshake and a smile. Great. But watch how they treat other people. So, let's say you are at um, a restaurant. You know, <laughs> I have had a lot of students who were servers in restaurants. Um, I was never personally a server myself, but I've been a hostess, and so I have known a lot of people who are servers. And I cannot tell you, I mean, I could go on and on for hours about the stories that I've heard from servers about how rude people are to them, the customers. You know, they'll like, you know, hey, give me another Coke, or hey, you know, I need this, or, you know, just, 
I can go on and on. Like, I personally am not rude to anyone, at least I try very hard not to be. Um, one thing that I was impressed with with my dad, okay, so he was always like, but he had a, a lot of other good qualities. And one of them was when we were at a restaurant, you know, when the server comes up and they say, you know, hi, everybody, you know, my name's Carol, I'm going to be your server, nice to meet you, can I get you a drink, you know, so they usually introduce themselves with their name, and I've noticed that most people, myself included, accidentally forget their name, um, it's not because I'm trying to be rude, you know, it just kind of goes in one ear and out the other, um, but my dad always remembered their names, so, you know, say it was Jane, hi, I'm Jane, I'm your server, my dad would always call her or him, the server, by their first name. Well, hi, Jane, how are you? It's so nice to see you today. How's your day going? Great, great. You know, like, he treated them like a human being. And if ever he needed another drink, oh, hey, Jane, oh, hey, Jane, uh, would you mind if, uh, you know, we had another round of drinks here? Oh, thank you so much. So thank you, using their name. Like, that really stuck with me my whole life, that my dad, and it is true, he really, really cared about people. He cared about his patients. He was a dentist. And he made people feel good about themselves. And it's the little things like that that really aren't so little. So watch how the person treats the other people. You know, they always say that it's not so important how you treat the CEO of a company, but it's important how you treat the janitor, right? You have to be nice to everybody. So Either they're not concerned about other people's feelings, they're not empathetic, maybe they're controlling, they might be getting a power trip out of it in some way. But again, it's about first impressions and if they're showing that red flag on the first date, that's probably who they are. And you know what, it's only going to get worse. If you get into a relationship with that person, that behavior will not get better, it will get worse, trust me seen it happen time and time again. I can't tell you how many people, especially women, no offense to us women, but we kind of hope that men will change for us and they don't. They just don't. Mark my words, they don't. We can wish, we can try all we want to try to change them, but they will not change. So again, watch out for these red flags because it is a huge insight into their real personality. Okay, maybe they only talk about themselves. I dated a guy once who, um, I mean, not very seriously, but, you know, we, we hung out and dated casually, I'd say, for a few months. And um, <laughs> at one point I realized, this man knows nothing about me. <laughs> like, he was a talker, and that was cool. I like people who talk. You know, I like outgoing, extroverted personalities. People are easy to talk to. So it's kind of easy to talk to, but yet he was always talking about himself. And I mean always, like, I think he knew, like, you know, obviously my name, he knew what I did for a living, where I worked, and then I had a couple kids, maybe. I think that's about it. <laughs> I think other than that, he had no idea um, anything about me. Not because I was hiding it. I actually wanted to talk about myself at least a little bit, but um, he, he never asked, <laughs> you know? So uh, I also, you know, have another friend who, you know, I knew a long time ago and reconnected, you know, and we were just emailing and I, I noticed that he never asked anything either about me. And I knew him well enough to know that it wasn't because he was selfish or anything, but, um, you know, people don't want to hear just about you or, you know, they want to talk a little bit, right? So, you know, if they're only talking about themselves, I've had friends like this too, where, you know, 98% of the time it's about them. And, you know, it's not even that I want to talk about me. Like, let's talk about other interesting things, you know, things going on in the world or great thoughts, how to save the world, world peace, I don't know. Um, but, you know, if they only talk about themselves, they could be selfish. Um, they could have a narcissistic personality. You know, narcissism is when you only care about yourself, obviously, and not about other people. And there are varying degrees of narcissism. So, um, you know, just because somebody's, you know, not like a serial murderer <laughs> doesn't mean they don't have some narcissism in them. So, um, 
you know, and, and obviously if they're only talking about themselves, they are not thinking about, oh wait, I haven't asked anything about you. You know, I went on a date with, with someone once who I really, really liked, but I noticed after the date that he really did talk a lot about himself. And so I'm like, well, I really like the guy, but let's just like file that in the back of my mind, see if he asks about me later. And so on the second date, he did, well, actually before the second date, he, we were texting or whatever. He's like, okay, I know I talked about myself a lot the first date and I'm sorry. I really want to know about you now. Um, you know, tell me, you know, second date is yours, basically. I mean, he didn't really say it like that, but um, that made me think, oh, wow, he um, recognized and he talked about himself, but also kind of bad about it and still really wanted to know about me. That impressed me, actually. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go out again. So, um, you know, there was empathy there. He did realize that. And it turned out he was not a selfish person or a narcissistic personality. He was a great guy. So um, nonetheless, just keep an eye on that. If they talk too much about themselves, or even if they're not just talking about themselves, if they do all the talking, you know, if it's very one-sided and it feels like they're talking to you or at you, instead of with you, you know, almost like I always kind of joke and say that some people can talk so much, you can just kind of like turn them over, you know, and face a wall and it wouldn't matter because they're just, it doesn't matter like who or what they're talking at, they just need to talk, you know, and that's fine. But, you know, I want to feel like we are having a two-way conversation together, not alone, not like just a monologue. So, you know, keep those two things in mind or those things in mind because they are important. On the other side of the coin, if they don't talk about themselves or won't talk about themselves, and that's another huge flag because um, maybe they don't want to. What are they hiding? It, okay, benefit of the doubt here, not everybody is comfortable with self-disclosure. You know, self-disclosure is telling other people things about yourself. That's cool, you know, like, it is risky sometimes, you know, like the more you reveal about yourself, the more that somebody can, I don't want to say use it against you, but the more vulnerable you get. You know, I'm perfectly fine with self-disclosure, but um, not everybody is. So I kind of try to mirror them, you know, like I had a friend, you know, a long time ago who I was good friends with her, but I really didn't know that much about her. So I felt weird disclosing stuff on my end because she didn't really disclose much on her end but um so that's okay i mean not everybody's really feeling safe on a first date to really tell them a whole lot about themselves but that's okay um just you know if you like the person just keep watching them over time but it could be that they're hiding something like one time i was on a dating app and um i don't know i forgot exactly how it went but i I was asking this guy questions, kind of like, what was, what was your ex-wife like, or what, something to that effect. And I, I, I think I said, how long have you been divorced? And he's like, well, um, um, well, he was like trying to avoid answering the, que answer the question. And I'm like, are you even divorced? And it turns out the guy wasn't even divorced. And he wasn't even separated. He was just on this dating app just for amusement's sake because he just wanted to talk to people and wanted to make himself feel good, I guess. And I'm like, well, I don't think we're going to be a match because I think you should either A, go to counseling to try to fix your marriage, get divorced if you can't fix your marriage, and you really should get off the dating app, dude, because you're being very unethical, not only to your wife, but to people like me who thought you were actually single. So if they won't talk about themselves, just keep it in the back of your mind. Are they hiding something? Unfortunately, there are a lot of people on dating apps and dating sites that are either married or in a relationship. I was naive enough when I was doing it to not even really think about it. I figure, why would you be on dating app if you're not single, right? Well, a lot of people, unfortunately, um, especially men, no offense to the men out there, but they, they like the ego boost. You know, they like talking to other women because it makes them feel better about themselves. So, you know, 
think about how much they talk. Um, do they give vague information? Is it purposely vague? Do they evade answering questions? You know, kind of like politicians do. You know, like in a debate, they'll ask a question and they'll do everything they can to not answer it. They'll talk around it, but they won't actually answer the question. You know, sometimes it's a yes or no question. You know, like when I ask the guy, are you divorced? It should be yes or no. <laughs> yes, I'm divorced or no, I'm not. But, you know, he had to talk and talk and talk and try to, you know, avoid answering the question. And I'm like, okay, well, he's clearly married. Um, so if they want to talk about themselves, it could indicate that perhaps they're maybe emotionally unavailable to, you know, maybe, you know, there are a lot of emotionally unavailable people out there. And there are these attachment styles called, um, well, there are three of them actually, but um, one of them is an avoidant attachment style, meaning people avoid emotionally attaching to people because, you know, they think it's risky and they don't like it and it's uncomfortable for them. You know, there's, that's a whole other episode too. I'll, I'll talk about sometime, but, um, you know, if they won't share themselves and again, it's a first date, that's fine. But if you like the person well enough to go out with them more than once, just keep your eye on that because could be that they are emotionally unavailable or that they will not attach very well. Um, you know, everybody has their own needs for attachment, but if you are the kind of person who wants to be emotionally intimate and close to somebody, then if they don't talk about themselves, that could be a big problem down the line. Watch their body language. You know, I teach nonverbal communication in my classes and you know, like 80 to 90 percent of the meaning of a message really is in the nonverbals, in the in the body language, not just body language, but tone of voice and um, you know how much space you leave between people and stuff. So watch their body language. You know, uh, eye contact is very important. Eye contact is kind of like you know the window to the soul. It's saying I'm connecting with you. I'm paying attention to you. You're important to me. You know, not everybody's comfortable with eye contact because, you know, it can be, you know, in different situations, it could be uncomfortable. But, you know, if the person is not really making any eye contact with you, if they're talking, you know, they're talking this way and they're talking at you, but they're talking this way or they're looking this way and never at you, you know, that, that's a real disconnect. So watch for that. Um, and and the, the amount of space that you have between two people, you know, obviously the more you like someone, the closer you tend to be, the farther apart you are is usually indicative of not liking a person so much. So, you know, maybe you're sitting in a bar and, you know, the bar stool's right there. Are they kind of like leaning back and trying to keep their distance or are they leaning into you? And looking at you or maybe scooting closer like maybe they want to hold your hand or something um, you know so the the space between you will tell a lot about how somebody feels but you know try to mirror them a little bit you know you can both tell if you really think about it hard enough you don't really even have to think it hard enough about it hard enough it's kind of intuitive but you know are they smiling if they're smiling they probably are having a good time again not everybody is very animated i tend to be a very animated person as you can tell i have a lot of facial expressions i use my hands a lot I smile a lot but that's just my natural personality not everybody um is like that and that's not that i'm better than them it's just our own personality so there might be some people who just naturally are more stoic and don't really smile so much it's fine, but you know, if you are a person like me who wants to be around someone who is, you know, happier and smiley and all that, then might not be a good match for you. Again, might not be, you know, might be a perfectly great person, but you know, usually we smile when we're happy or at least have some sort of um, warmth in our body language. Um, no touching, no attempts at touch, I said. No touching is, um, again, everybody has their own comfort level for that. Like some people don't want to hold someone's hand for like months on end or, you know, kiss them for months on end. And that's fine. That's your own preference. Some people are fine, you know, sleeping with somebody on the first date. And if you want to do that, that's your prerogative too. You know, most of us are probably somewhere in the middle. Um, some people don't want a stranger to hold their hand or to touch them and they find it creepy. 
okay. Some people are fine with it. You know, like I'm the kind of person where I'm fine with it. If I, if I like you, sure, you can hold my hand on a first date. And so I know you like me. So, you know, that's kind of a tricky thing. It depends on what your personal boundaries are. But, you know, if they are like really keeping their, their distance face-wise and touch-wise, then they might not really be interested in you. So, the conversation. <clears throat> what if it doesn't flow? I don't know about you, but I've been in these situations before, not even just on a date, but like with people where they're just like really hard to talk to. Um, it's like pulling teeth, right? And you're like, okay, I feel like I'm doing all the work here. Um, I'm constantly thinking of more questions to ask this person so I can keep this conversation going. You know, like, um, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, um, you know, I'm an insurance agent, period, man. Oh, really? That's great. Like, what does that mean? Uh, I sell insurance to people. Oh, well, what kind of insurance do, do you sell? Um, life insurance. Okay, uh, do you like your job? No, not really. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, okay, like, you know, hey, what kind of insurance do you sell? Oh, well, I sell life insurance and you know, here's why, and I love helping people because, you know, blah, 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 it sets their family, you know, like, <laughs> conversation isn't flowing, and they're giving you, like, one-word answers, or these awkward silences, or you're, like, out of things to ask them, out of things to talk about, and you're like, oh, gosh, um, you know, it shouldn't feel like work, you know, the conversation should feel easy and natural, and you should be excited and engaged with that person. So, you know, I've been on dates or just with people in general where I just, I'm like, oh my gosh, just shoot me. I can't talk to this person very easily. And I'm a pretty talkative person and I think I'm pretty easy to talk to. So when I have a hard time talking to someone and I'm uncomfortable, I don't, I just don't enjoy it. And so why would I go out with that person again? Um, but the best dates I've been on are where you just like flow, it's just flowing back and forth and you're just like really into the conversation and into what they're saying and it's exciting and interesting and then you know like whoa wow look where, where'd the time go you know it should be easy it should be flowing it should be good you know especially in the beginning when you don't know somebody sky's the limit you can talk about anything and so you shouldn't run out of things to talk about if it's just somebody you met um you know on the first date so Pay attention to how well the conversation is, is going and flowing. Kind of leads to the next thing, like, are you bored? So even if, even if the person, you're engaging, you know, in decent conversation, that's cool. So maybe the conversation is flowing, but you are still kind of bored. You know, I've been out on dates with, I don't know, one guy was talking about like the sewers in his neighborhood. And he went on and on about that for like an hour. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even joking. Like, I don't know if it was sewers, but it was that boring, you know, or the concrete in his neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, I mean, so I, I <laughs> you have to know. I, I didn't care. I want to know about him, you know. So I was bored of the conversation. And then there's another guy I went out with who the conversation actually was pretty good, but I was like, oh my gosh, the time was just dragging. Just couldn't wait to leave and um <laughs> it's like wow well, even though he's a perfectly nice guy oh, the time was dragging I just that's not a good sign it's just not so if you <laughs> I've also had to make excuses to leave too probably some of you have but if you if you feel like that like oh gosh when can I get out of here even if the conversation is going it's not a good sign so pay attention to how you're feeling That'll tell you everything. Now the phone. <laughs> you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, this wasn't a problem because people didn't have, well, first of all, they didn't have cell phones. Second of all, in text. Third of all, there's like no social media a long time ago, but you know, for the last, I don't know, 15 years at least, there's been texting, if not more, um, social media, you know, at least 10 to 15 years too. 
you know, smartphone has been out since 2007, so we're all used to using our phones, but um, too much so. Like, so if the person has their phone right there, say you're having coffee or dinner, um, that would indicate to me that at any given moment, they're just going to grab their phone. Oh, somebody texts them, they're like, oh, who, who texted me? And just like cut you off. Or, you know, phone call. Oh, take a phone call. I'm sorry, but that's rude, I think. I mean, I don't mean to criticize anyone out there who does that, but what does that say? It says, my attention is not fully on you, right? My attention is on the phone. Because anytime something happens with my phone, my attention, I'm, I'm going to ignore you while I look at my phone, right? Well, that doesn't make somebody feel very good. They're, they're saying my phone's more important than you. And even if they don't apologize, or even if they do apologize, you know, maybe they're expecting a really important phone call, that's fine. You know, maybe it's about their kid and they, they should say, oh, just want you to know, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm expecting this phone call about my kid, you know, the doctor, or whatever it might be. So I really apologize. I do have to answer that. Sure, no problem. You know, they told you ahead of time, but not just, oh, my best friend's calling. Hold on for a half an hour while I talk to them. No. You know, like, a date should be, like, just two people. So put your phone away, unless you're expecting something or there could be some emergency. Like, put your phone away. And if the person you're with doesn't do that and they're taking their attention away from you, that's a huge red flag. Because imagine, again, if you're in a relationship with this person, they'll probably sit on the couch on their phone all the time and never talk to you. Do you want that? If you do, that's cool. If you don't, then that's a huge red flag. Bad manners. Not everybody has the best manners, you know. We learn our manners from our parents, but, you know, you should, again, be giving your best first impressions. So if they are, you know, have bad etiquette at dinner or when they're eating or, you know, these things are controversial. Opening doors, pulling out chairs, paying on the date. You know, a lot of people have differing opinions about that. Um, you know, my stepmom, when she got together with my dad, my dad was like a huge chivalrous gen gentleman. <clears throat> they were 18 years apart in age and she kind of grew up in the hippie generation. So, you know, like he would always offer to pay things when they first got together and she didn't like that because, you know, she's a feminist and there's, that's great. There's nothing wrong with being a feminist. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of women might not like if a man opens a door or pulls out their chair or pays for things or pays on a date. That's cool. I mean, that's your, your preference. Um, but I grew up with a dad who was chivalrous, like I said, and a gentleman, and he always opened doors for us. He pulled out our chairs. Um, he, it, he treated us with respect. And, you know, I didn't think that was a bad thing. I didn't think it was demeaning. I just thought that's how a man should treat a woman. So that's just my perspective. You might have a different one, but if you're a guy, I don't think you can really go wrong with opening the doors for, for a lady, pulling out their chair, paying for the date. Um, you know, if the woman asks the man out, that's different. Whoever asks whom out, I think should pay. <clears throat> but, you know, just those things show that, again, you're important to me. I'm respecting you. And just kind of watch for those little things. Do they have good manners or not. I mean, even if it's just something like you're paying for the date, but, you know, somebody orders a $40 meal when they could have ordered a $10 meal. <laughs> I don't know. My mom always taught me to order the, you know, the cheapest thing on the menu. So the person paying wasn't, you know, going broke. <laughs> so just little things like that are just important to look out for. The date doesn't last long. Okay, again, this is an area where a lot of people might disagree. Like, for me, if I'm feeling it, if I really like a person on a first date, I'll stay there, you know, not forever, but, you know, like, I don't care how long the date lasts. In, in fact, for me, the longer the date lasts, it shows me the more we like each other because we're both, like, so involved in the conversation and into it that, you know, like, oh, where'd time go? Um, 
So, but not everybody's like that. I, I know a lot of people who advise, oh, for the first day, you know, like no more than an hour or, you know, keep it short, like just a cup of coffee or that's fine too. Whatever you want to do. Everybody has their own way of looking at it. So this is just my, my viewpoint. Um, but you know, even if it is like a half an hour and they're like, well, I gotta run. It could mean that they have low interest or maybe you're feeling that way and you want to cut the date short. You have low interest. So longer could be better, could not be better. You know, so that again, that's really up to you and what you want. But you know, if you are feeling like you want the date con to continue longer, or you know, sometimes when people like maybe have dinner and then it's, I don't know, nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock, they might say, well, do you have time for go somewhere else for a drink? You know, if somebody wants to extend the date, that probably means they're pretty interested and if they don't, that might not mean that they have a whole lot of interest. So those are things to kind of keep your eye on. Um, because you know what, a lot of people, unfortunately, kind of tend to chase after people who have low interest, but they don't really realize that the other person has low interest in them, and so they end up chasing, and that does not um, work. <laughs> so uh, again, that's a whole other episode I can talk about, but you know, just keep that in mind too. You're not excited. <laughs> you know, um, again, tons of women in particular, and men too, like, well, this guy was really nice. Like, he's everything I really kind of asked for. Like, he's nice looking, he's a gentleman, a good conversationalist. I just wasn't feeling it though, but I probably should go out with him again, right? Because there's nothing really wrong with him. My advice is, eh, don't force it. You know, don't just like, well, let's just see where it goes, because then you end up settling. You do not want to settle because there are plenty of fish in the sea. You want to be excited. You want the other person to be excited, right? You want to both be excited because of this first date. So if you're not feeling any excitement at all, that's probably an indication that you might not be a good match. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't plenty of cases out there where somebody grows on you. It's happened to me. You know, like friends, perhaps, where I didn't find them attractive at first. They grew on me. You know, maybe we dated for a little bit. But honestly, at the end of the day, I really should have gone with my first gut instinct. <laughs> because your gut instinct is usually right. And so if you're not excited about this person, it means that your gut is telling you no. So don't force it. You know, it's okay, I guess, if you want to try to explore. But the longer you keep going out with a person, it's harder to break it off. So it's up to you, but just pay attention to how you feel. If you're not excited, probably not a good sign. And then finally, if one or both of you don't follow up after that first date, there's your answer. <laughs> I like the whole, if you guys have ever seen um, Sound of Music, you know, so long, farewell, I'm not gonna sing for you, but you know, bye-bye. <laughs> like, Sometimes people think, oh, well, especially women say, well, I haven't heard from him for a couple of days after the day. Maybe he's just trying to play it cool and, uh, you know, he'll, or maybe he's just really busy or maybe he's on a business trip or, you know, they make up all these excuses in their head <clears throat> about why he hasn't called or texted. Well, let me tell you this. Silence really is an answer. No answer is an answer. Silence speaks volumes. Because if somebody's really interested, they are going to be excited and they are going to contact you. I don't mean like annoying and clingy and chasing. There's a difference between that and interested. So, you know, don't chase them. If you don't hear from them, or if you do, but it's like one word and you're kind of get the sense they're trying to maybe blow you off, pay attention to that. Don't ignore that red flag. Let them go. Let them go because it's not your person. Trust me, your person, the right person for you, will not go, you know, a long time without contacting you. They just won't. You know, it's kind of like when someone says, here are the winning lottery tickets, and they're like, yeah, I think I'm going to wait on that. No, you're going to go, like, right now and get that winning lottery ticket, those numbers, right? You're not going to wait. <laughs> and the same thing when you really like someone. So don't chase them. 
or even if they're chasing you, don't let them just be polite and say, you're a wonderful person, but I don't think we're a good match. Leave it at that. So anyway, those are my tips. Those are the red flags you need to watch out for for a first date. Um, again, you never know. Give someone the benefit of the doubt, but um, keep these in mind because again, you, you are looking for the right person, not just any person. So these red flags will point you in the right direction um, because if you see too many of these, then they're not your person. All right, as always, I always tell you I have personal coaching. If any of you guys want to get in touch with me, have any questions personally, don't hesitate to reach out. Oh, it can be found at drcarolmorgan.com and her site, his side, which is a website with a lot of different articles about dating, just like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you like it. So, um, you know, I have a whole lot of stuff that I talk about on here, dating and single life, marriage, romantic relationships, motivation, self-improvement, you name it. If it makes your life better, that's what I try to talk about. That's the whole point of me doing this. I genuinely want to help you guys. I want to make your lives happier, your relationships happier, and you happier. So thank you so much for being here again. I wish you love and peace and joy. Um, come back. Come back for the next episode. And um, until then, I love you all and I appreciate you all. Until then, peace out.